Mike, the, it's popping up. I keep seeing this question popping up. Oh, it baby. makes me nauseous, actually, oh, to even think about this. Joey Gallo's name has, it was actually, this is one of those like Jerry Stackhouse type of moments where last year they were like, yeah, you're going to trade him, but you're probably going to get him back. Do you remember and now, how mad you were, though? And now it's coming to reality. I wasn't, I wasn't, I got it. I understand it. I didn't want to trade him last year because I was like, this is your one good player. You're trading and just saying, we're giving up on the season. We're just moving on from this guy. And I do remember the Odor thing. And I do remember feeling the same way about Gallo. I don't like trading people to the Yankees for them. Look at Jose Trevino, Mike. We traded Jose Trevino, and guess what? He's helping them win games. He's catching and making the pitchers look good because he's so good at what he does, and he is going to help them probably win a World Series. And the Rangers were a farm system that traded the guy away and said, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. And the Yankees are like, yeah, we benefit from this. That's kind of how I felt. I felt that last year, Joey Gallo was going to be at the plate, have that moment, rock one out of that uh, uh, little league in outfield out there, and then they were going to be like, man, Joey Gallo, what a great trade from the Rangers again. Well, didn't we all know this was going to happen to Joey Gallo's career when he went to New York? I, I would say this. Everybody who knows Joey Gallo, except for, I guess, the Yankees, knew that this was a bad situation for him. Going to that environment was not going to be good for Joey Gallo. I will say this. I didn't know he was going to be a 160 hitter there. I, I thought that he would be under 200. I thought he would be somewhere between like 185 and 205 somewhere in there and he was going to ultimately not like the environment of the Yankees media the Yankees fans and they are great I mean the Yankees are having one of the greatest years in Major League Baseball history but I bet Joey's not having a lot of fun batting 168 with a 629 OPS just to give you an idea 10 home runs in a full season, he's kind of gotten hot for that, honestly. In a okay. full season, OPS wise, like it doesn't even compare. I'll just give you in 2021, right before he got tra- obviously he got traded from the Rangers, but he was had an 869 OPS. Is that good with the nice. Rangers? Yes. In 2021, when you traded him, he had a 707 OPS with the Yankees last year, so it dropped tremendously, and now it's dropped. Uh, another almost 100 points in 2019. I'm going to take out the COVID year. It's very tough in 57 games to get a, a really a read on what your stats were going to be. Cause we know Joey, Joey gets super hot. There's this two week stretch where yep. his OPS is like 1.5. Nobody can compete with him. And he had a 986 OPS in 2019 and an 869 OPS in 2021. Nice. I think I would like Joey Gallo back on what the Texas Rangers. What are you doing right now? I know. Now? A lot of my friends His who are OPS former major terrible. leaguers are going to disagree with me. They're trying to dump him because they want Andrew Benatendi, who made the all-star team this year for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, he's a guy that came up in Boston system, and he has found himself again. He's a better overall player than Joey Gallo because of his ability to get on base. Joey Gallo has very little ability to kind of get on base. I know that he's better and better with walks for the most point in his career, but still never a great walk guy. Uh, and this year, it's not very good. He has a 288 on base percentage, very low. Mm. He's going to be better than in New York. And uh, here's the deal. I want to trade for him and put him in left. I guess I'd move him back to right field. I'd put him in right field here, and I would move Adolis Garcia to left field. And then I have Leody Tavares in center field. That is an unbelievably great defensive outfield. Or you have a great defensive outfield with Cole Calhoun, but isn't Calhoun on a one-year deal? I think so, yeah. So now I would like to get Joey Gallo. The Rangers, from what I understand, were right under $20 million a year. They were like, look, we're going to give you a four-year contract at right under $20 million a year. Take it. We don't trade you. Don't take it, and we are trading you. And he said, no, I can't do that. I would like closer to, I believe, $25 million per year. And the Rangers were not willing to get close to that number, so they traded him. Well, as bad as he has played, his number is going to be so low in what you can sign him for that I'm not opposed to. It's not like the end of the world, but I'm not opposed to bringing back Joey Gallo and signing him to like a three-year $36 million deal. It might even be less than that, but I'll put it at like $12 million per year. And I think batting sixth or seventh in your lineup – 
and being one of the best defensive right fielders in the game. Mookie Betts is better than him. Aaron Judge, honestly, might be better than him or as good as him in right field. But you get one of the best defensive right fielders, and I think you get a guy who would bat around 220-ish, just like he batted for you in 2021 before he got traded. Cole Calhoun, by the way, is on a one-year $5.2 million deal with a club option. So that might be like... I don't know, at $5.2 million a year, is that a better to pick up that option after what he's done this I season? would pick him up, yes. I would pick up his option because I think he's very tradable. And you might Gallo. trade, honestly, you might. What if you traded? What I think the Yankees are trying to dump Gallo. Okay. And I will say this. I don't know how much some of the teams that I knew really liked him in 2019. Like him anymore. Like him anymore. But I bet there are, it sounds like there are some teams willing to like, if you, we're not going to give you anything for him, mm -hmm. but we will take him off of your hands and take the rest of his salary this year. So you guys can open up the everyday spot for Andrew Benatendi that it seems like that's who they're going after from the Kansas City Royals. And I think there might be a lot of Ranger fans like, Mike, what are you doing? He strikes out so many times, this and that. I get it. He hits 20% of the time, maybe. I get it. I'm bringing him back to the Texas Rangers on a deal where he's 28 years old, and I want him to sign this deal. I'd love to do a sign. I'd love to do I know it's sign, sign, sign and trade. trade but Let's do it. That sign you trade for him trade. and that he sign signs a quick three-year deal. He has Boris. Boris might go like, we got to go to free agency C. Boris probably desperately wants him in a non-contending situation. Mm -hmm. I hate saying that because Joey Gallo, ultimately, for our Texas Rangers, next year and the year after and the year after that, we better be contending, and he better be able to produce in contending situations. Joey Gallo is a number six or number seven hole hitter in the major leagues. Let's be honest. I know he's made an all-star team for us twice. He should be batting sixth or seventh on your good team with limited media attention, with – Limited fans going to boo him when he strikes out four times in a game. That's going to happen. It's going to happen probably 30 games a year. He's going to strike out four times in a game. I know what he is if I bring him back here. And I know what he can do in this low-pressure situation. So I'm okay with bringing him back. I'd feel like you almost got this major discount. You got like a 6 or $8 million discount on what you're willing to offer him because of how bad it went in New York. That being said, I'm sure there's other teams that could want him, but I'm okay with bringing Joey Gallo back. And I can hear some of my um, MLB alumni going, Mike, Joey Gallo drives me insane. I don't want him. Do you not remember what it's like him coming up in big situations? That it's He's either going to hit a home run and win the game or he's going to strike out. He's not going to get a single. And that's why he struggled with RBIs. When you look at a guy who pops in his career years, 41 and 40 home runs, and you have 41 home runs and 80 RBIs, that doesn't make any sense. When you have 40 home runs and 92 RBIs, that's a little bit better. But still, if you're hitting 40 home runs, you should be more like at 110 to 130 RBIs. But it's because he struggles with hitting singles with runners in scoring position. All right. And let's, I'm just looking at uh, two days ago, the lineup from the 10-8 10, 10 win over the Athletics. Josh Smith was your leadoff hitter. All right. Doing that again, Cole Calhoun. Him and him and Leoti, I okay. think, are, are your hopefully Leotis one are of nine them. right now. Right, and I think that those guys fit one nine great. Okay, uh, Simeon at two. All right, yep. Duggar's your three. Well, no, that was because Seeger, Seeger had to sit out that day. Right? Seeger was your four. So I'm trying to figure out like where where you are. Adolis is is five. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Nope, that's bad. He All pinched right. it. Okay, thank so you. Seeger was three. Adolis four. Yes. Nathaniel Lowe, five. Thank you. Sam Huff. Yeah, uh, I like pinched, this. He ended up pinch hitting. But Sam Huff, six, isn't bad for me. Jonah and then, Heim. And then, okay. Cole Calhoun, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad Miller, and Tavert. He's He should bat seventh. When you're bringing in. You know, crap. You're, you might be right. All of a sudden, I have a guy. Yeah, he's going to strike out 200 times. I already know that. I, I know that his on-base percentage is going to just be okay. But that's a lot of power in the seven hole, maybe. Like, that's a lot of power when, in eight hole, maybe. I, I get that a lot of Ranger fans are, please, no, please, no, please, no. Rather than him being the three hole hitter years ago. In in last year when you traded him, he was batting 223 with a 380 on base percentage and an 869 OPS. 25 home runs, 55 RBIs. Now, that's more than halfway through a season. It's 95 games. But if you bring back a guy at 12 million a year, who's going to drive in, I would hope from that position, 
80 runs, play great defense. You know what you're getting, a huge strikeout guy. But a guy that also, he can transition to your first baseman too. He's too good of an outfielder to move to first base. Got a great arm. But Nathaniel Lowe does struggle at first base as a defensive player. He's improved so much as a hitter. But I do think this gives you options with Joey Gallo and his Because he can play left, right, and first base.